everybody, sports fans, uh, I don't know, degenerates, people who like, um, I don't know, bad things. Kids. Okay, well, if you like kids. The kids. No, sure. say hello to the kids. Oh, hey. Like. <laughs> you know, I don't think I want to call them kids anymore. We're out of the kids phase? I Yeah, I think they're grown-ass adults. Back to the drawing And they should board. be treated like that. Hey, I uh, welcome back to the Nick Hall Comedy Podcast. I am your host, Nick Hall. I'm joined as always by Josh Griffey. Good to talk to you again. It is good to be back Big here week. in the studio. Big week, of course. <laughs> it always is. Uh, this is episode number two in the studio, and I got to tell you, I already feel like a seasoned veteran. Yeah. I probably, uh, no offense to Jeff Daniels, love the guy, but it probably should have been me in newsroom. Newsroom. And not him. Because oh, this, yeah. this feels at home. It couldn't have hurt season two at all. <clears throat> well, <laughs> that's neither here we nor got there. Our, Fucking free waters. We got free our waters lights again. on us, burning lights on Lights again. Us. Big week. We got uh, the new Kent out this week was, uh, what was it? First, first base coach. First base coach. <laughs> um, that one went over well. People are digging it. People are digging it. Uh, I Personally, I thought it was pretty funny because pretty much all of those things that, that parents say, you know, like, Good eye, way to watch. Don't swing at the first pitch. Like right. that has bugged me since I was like six years old, playing baseball. I re- like I, re- I remember I, I, little league, maybe seven or eight, and I had a coach who was like, "Never swing at the first pitch," and I was like seven, and I was like, "That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard." Was it live arm or <laughs> pitching machine? It was live arm. It was okay. little league. Then yeah, that's really stupid. And he was like. He's like, well, you just don't know about baseball yet. And I was like, well, obviously you don't, 38-year-old 30, man. Because I'm like eight, and I picked that out. Like, why would you let the first pitch go if it's right down the middle? All The, the pitchers are trying to get ahead in every at-bat, right. especially in Little League, because they don't know about pitching around guys. Well, it's like not the, like they have like a lot of pitches out in, there. In Little League more so than even the majors, because in Little League, the first pitch every time is almost always a fastball. Right. If the kid can even throw a curveball. Fastball, ball, yeah. Like, let, let's swing away. If that yeah. thing's right down the middle, fucking let it go. I never got that piece My of advice. My dad used it's to do that. Thing. That was his coaching tip for um, a pitching machine. So the kids would do this thing to well, see about like the height and the speed, and right. then you would rip it the second one. Right. But for live arm, it makes literally no sense. Yeah. It's as and, foolish a decision. I mean, and there's, there's different – I guess there's different times in the game where you can use it as strategy in terms of like – especially, you know, in the majors, like your sixth, seventh inning. Okay, let's run the pitch count up a little bit. Let's, let's see a pitch. Right. But I get it then. But like third inning, 0-0, zero, zero, you're trying to get ahead <laughs> – Fucking if he throw, if he hums one in there, you fucking crank it, man. I just don't get that. I don't get it. I just it just baffles me that you would teach anybody that to We're teaching kids to, to learn, never swing at the first to learn pitch through adversity. It's stupid. <laughs> it's dumb as hell. I get it on like the pitching machine in practice. Like go ahead and see one, and then you know take right. your hacks at it. Like that makes sense. Whatever. Feel it out. Learn yeah, how to live see it. arm. It's. Just chance, anyways. Like, yeah. How many of those little kids? Like you don't know when they're gonna ever throw a strike again. Yeah. I mean, I Hit got it. I got bean probably a, a million times in Lily because kids can't throw it over the plate, and the one pitch they do, you don't you, you don't want me to swing at that one pitch, you fucking dick. Ah. Uh, anyway, speaking of uh, losers, <laughs> like first base coach, <laughs> Team USA bit the dust. They did. Finally, this week. I was heartbroken. Uh you were not. I was I was heartbroken. <laughs> I was uh, it, I wasn't at all. I will say it was a hell of a game. Like it, it, it was a little boring at the start because it was mostly a defensive game. It was, it was a actually game. most of a deep. When I say mostly defense, I mean uh, Howard was just basically there. It was almost like a, a shooting practice for, Shoot for practice. Belgium. They were just launching balls at him the entire first it reminded first me two halves of the scene in Mighty Ducks. When they strap Goldberg to the goal, <laughs> yeah. and they're like, "You're gonna learn today. Like, that's, don't be scared." And they just start whipping pucks at him. That's I'm a like, great analogy. Every that's, time you're like, "Where is the defense? Like, do we have that? I mean, what are I we don't doing? Know. I know we're bad at soccer, but we should at least put the prerequisite." It was amount like of defenders at one on. point, I can't remember the exact stat, but at one point, the shot differential was like twenty-two to three. Yeah, and it was still zero-zero. So I don't know. I mean, Howard. Here's I guess here's my thing with it. Howard played. One of the best, one of the best games ever, like ever in the history of a goalie in, in the World Cup. He did statistically he had a lot of saves. Yeah, statistically he did. Uh, he definitely beyond the that. We lost. <laughs> my problem with it, and I bet you'll share my sentiment in this. My problem with it was after the game, you get on Twitter and everybody was like, 
hey, man, don't be down. Be proud of how great of a run the USA made. Like, did we I really? I got in a Twitter beef about Did we this. really make that great of a won. Name, name we, one other thing in, like, related to America where we'd be like, Sweet guys, like one, two, and one. <laughs> right, we had knocked out. Like have, the very first game, you can possibly get eliminated. You get eliminated after you survive the group right. stage. Yeah, like we barely survived. But we had, yeah, that's it. We I had mean, that's pathetic. We had one win, <laughs> one draw, right. and two losses. Your like, goalie sets a record for the most saves. You can't win. Like stage. our win percentage was two fifty, twenty five percent. Yeah, like that's not in no nowhere else. That's not even a good batting average. You don't even have to get a real well, high like, percentage. Imagine <laughs> if the dream team did that in the Olympics. Like, would we have fucking thought they were heroes? Let's imagine uh, your favorite baseball team goes to the World Series and they win one, lose two, and tie yeah. one. Would you be and, happy with their performance and granted, at that point? Like, come granted, on, like they competed in every game against some really good teams, which we haven't done. A lot in the past. I'll give them. I'll give them that pass. But I'm not going to celebrate and be like, "Hey, man, it was a hell of a run." Like, it, I mean, fifty. Not really. Of the game we they played. They got. We beat. backed our way into the they knockout round. They almost got round. beat by Ghana in the right. only game they won. You and, know what I mean? It's like there's nothing to be impressed about. And we Plus, had, I didn't realize this. We are ranked as the 13th best national team in the world. So for a team who's on the cusp of a top 10 team, people have to stop the coddling and just being like. Hey, we showed up. I agree. We fucking showed up. Yeah. And, you know, Howard let the ball bounce off him a couple times. Like, that's pretty cool, yeah. right? Like, and I just, I did want to just fucking go down to, like, Los Feliz or, like, these areas. Like, they would show, like, where all the hipsters <gasps> conglomerate and wear scarves and, like, striped oh, shirts yeah. like Waldo. Yeah. For America. I just wanted to go down there and just fucking, like, collect tears in these water bottles to use them for jerk lube later. <laughs> I was so fucking stoked when they lost. Yeah, it's, I'm just I'm done with the. I wasn't stoked like, when we you're lost. You're my dear friend, but like you know, now I can have non pretend to be a soccer fan Nick back. Uh, I can go back to reading Twitter and Facebook. Like I'm just I'm very excited about. it. <laughs> I think my first tweet after was like I think I'll end this charade now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not taking off the America clothes though. No, I don't know. I, I I wasn't happy when we lost. We were competitive. I'll give them that. We played better against some some really good countries than maybe we ever have. But at the end of the day, like you said, we're almost top ten. We got to start winning some of those games. Guess or... what? I never cheer for man. America being fucking losers and jokes <laughs> on the world stage. Why would I cheer for that? We weren't jokes this year. I'll give them that. If they fucking, we competed in every if they, match. If they were like had won two matches in group stage, a tie, you know, lost in the group stage maybe, and then they won like two games in this. That's maybe something to be proud of. Yeah. But if you don't even have a winning record, that's nothing to be proud of. We I got agree. through on a fucking bullshit technicality because of a bullshit system. It wasn't a bullshit technicality. And then we, got, we got fucking it was, punked out the very first chance we got. We got in because we, got, we, we scored we the second spanked. most points. I actually sat and down then, and watched this whole game with you. We got spanked that entire we, game. Belgium dominated we lost us by the ten first goals. 90 minutes. Yeah, it was amazing that we didn't, they didn't There's score. There's nothing to be proud of in that game. It was incredible that they didn't we score. We let balls bounce But that's what I'm saying Howard. about Tim Howard. Like, <laughs> if anybody has... Like, a reason to be proud of that game, it's Tim Howard. Well, he's also getting and, long in the tooth. That could have maybe right. been his last World Cup run. Yeah, I think it is. I That's think, fucking I think they've already him. named his replacement, as a matter of fact. Yeah. He's 35. I mean, Yeah, I mean, that's old. For crying out loud. He'll be 39 by the next but, World yeah, Cup. Yeah, he's, he's played, like, over 100 uh, international matches for us. Whatever. Anyway, hey, man, I Fuck still soccer. love America. Yeah, I love America. I still love Fuck soccer. Um Everyone who gave me shit on Twitter and YouTube about soccer, and you know, fucking shame on you, because I fucking have names actually jotted down, and I'm going to be checking them once every That's month or so to see if they have any soccer related dude, you, tweets. You are this close to doing the Jay and Silent Bob thing, where you fucking actually start trying to track down these kids on the internet, oh, yeah. and beat up like a tw- and beat up a twelve year old on his doorstep. Did you post on moviepoopshoot.com that Josh Griffey looks like a fucking Russian porn director and a Mexican drunk, and then just I would punch that guy in the face I'm just because he's you. a Cardinals fan. I can't believe. Let's go Cards. You're, I got to say, though, that's actually a pretty good burn, when, but when, fuck you. When I did Barstool, <laughs> man, I, I fucking got, like, so many uh, so many bad things, like, talking about, like, noodle arm, like, way yeah. worse than Russian porn director. You got to you gotta just let that shit go, No, man. I mean, it was a good burn. I gave him credit. It's a good burn. You got to let it go. Did you ever just have that day where you wake up and you just... Don't need anyone else telling you yeah. how bad you suck at well, things or yeah. this and that. Like, I've had those days. And I know it's our fault. We put ourselves out there for it. But at least, like, let's go cards. He has terrible taste, obviously. But I like let's go cards. Least, I don't like the Cardinals. Yeah. I mean, he at least had, but let's go cards he had a takes, good burn. He takes my side But there a lot, are other so. people on the that, like, comment on our videos, and they just put, like, the dumbest shit. And you're like, 
at least like if you're going to talk trash, like be good at it. I can respect a good trash yeah. talker. I don't know. Sometimes I like the we bad have some ones. They make me ones. laugh. We Sometimes have some we have some good ones. Not always. We have some pretty good commenters. You know who? You know who deserved to have some trash talking, or just like to be put in their place. Let me burp. It's good. Jo- it's good for TV. Josh and I. <laughs> Josh and I. We play on a softball team. The and spoilers, the, the mighty spoilers. Greendale spoilers. The spoilers. And last night, last night we go to our game, and the team that we're playing was they had a double header, and so <laughs> and so they were on the field still when we got there. So we were just kind of waiting on them to play. So we sit down, and they have the they have this. He's a giant. The dude was like probably right. six five, he six actually six. Actually, looked very much like Ben Roth. <laughs> he did. He looked a lot <laughs> like Roth. Like a fat, like a. A mix between like him and Matt Adams for the Cardinals, like fat body, dumb head, <laughs> yeah, like stupid goatee. <laughs> so, so, the, so we're like sitting there watching them play. This is the team we're about to play. And this this giant dude walks up to the plate, and it's a it was what it's two hundred two seventy five down the line. It's, like, right. it's not that big of a field. Mm-mm. So he gets up and and he's standing there, and, he, and the first and the pitch comes in, and he fucking like he hits it like a hundred feet in the air, right, pretty deep. Throw like drops his bat down like a dickhead, like like a comedian mic drop. Yeah, like a comedian mic drop. Turns back to the catcher and the umpire and goes, "That's the distance," <laughs> and then and then starts and starts walking to first, <laughs> makes it maybe two steps, and all of a sudden he looks up. The ball hits off the wall and back into play. Right, and he and he just like his fat ass just starts. He's like, rah, rah, rah. Chugging, he looks chugging. like Cartman when he's like chasing people around trying to see that Terrence. And first Phillips. of all, first of all. <laughs> A, I've hit home runs in slow pitch softball before. Right. You've hit them before. I've been right. to games where you've hit them. It's it's a it's cool. Yeah. But it's not that cool. Like you, the you, game is essentially set up like here. <laughs> please hit home runs. Right. Like no one's trying to juke the, you. The out. The guy's lobbing you a pitch in. You basically right. you have all the time in the world to adjust to the pitch, put a good swing on it, and hit it. Right. Uh, I get it when it when a guy in the major leagues. Fucking like what's uh, what's his name hit one like four eighty nine the other the other day was it uh, was was trout? it trout yeah he he the hit it, home run hit it and still like and yeah. still ran around the bases right but I get it when a guy just like beats the fuck out of like a green key fastball like a ninety five mile hour fastball right. hits a four fifty stands and looks at it for a second like that's that's somewhat of an accomplishment. If I ever hit a home run in the big leagues, I would be fucking flipping oh, yeah. bats. I'd be taking bats and from I'm the fi- guy on I'm deck. I'm fine with it, man. Oh, I'm a hundred percent fine with it. But when some when some thirty five year old man who can't run the bases lobs you in a pitch and you bear right. and you hit one that barely goes two hundred and seventy five feet, like right. you can't pimp that. No, there, you can't. Well, also, it's it's this the guy, most asinine thing. At fucking six foot five, six six. There's no way that guy weighed less than 350 pounds. No way. You're yep. like at that fucking enormous size, like yeah. maybe double the size of almost every guy on our team. Yeah. If you cannot hit a softball <laughs> 300 feet, yeah. then, I mean, I don't know what you'd be good well, for. Well, if I'm that guy, if I'm that big. Yeah, maybe we even, just hang him up from a raptor and he's a heavy Because that's, that's, that's a one-up field, so it's one of the fields where right. when one team hits a home run, you can't hit another one until the other team does, blah, blah, Ooh, blah. Cool, yeah. But if I'm that dude and I'm that big, I'm hitting it out every time just out of principle. Right. Just to, I'll take the outs and just be like, you know what? I should be. Sure. I should be hitting it out. I'm, I'm a monster. That guy is fucking enormous. But literally, the funniest thing <sighs> was he fucking went to the warning track every single at bat. And he got furious when Dalen, our shortstop, oh, turns yeah. around to me in left field and goes, Griffey, warning track power. <laughs> yeah. And the guy gave him a look like, I got real man's power. And it's like, no, you don't. No, like, you, you have don't. a giant man's body and, like, the power of, like, our littlest well, player. Then, well, then the game, then then it gets, uh, we're in the bottom of the last <laughs> inning. We're, we're down by, uh, no, we, we tied it up at this point. There's two outs. We tied it up. Or, no, 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 we were down by one still because it was Colson's right. at bat. So we're down by one. We had a runner on third, I think. Right. And and two outs, and our dude comes up, and he, Colston he, looks like a thirteen-year-old. Right, he fouls our, our player. Yes, he plays third base for us. He might be five foot tall. He right. might weigh eighty pounds. Right. that might be all. He fouls off the first pitch, <laughs> so he's got two strikes. The next pitch comes in, and the and the catcher's like ball game, <laughs> like just just sure of it. Just Col- Colston fucking hits one in the hole between short and third, gets the first. We tie the game, and then you came up and hit the game winner. Right, and we won it. But like these guys. <laughs> These guys, like, I wish they were in Vegas and just lost all of their money because they were, 
they were just calling fucking locks of the century last lots night of, lots and missing everything. Lots of trash talk. Just trash talk. It's the, a dangerous road you walk, the preemptive shit talk in sports, because yeah. I've done it before, and it almost never works Especially for Especially in so- <laughs> Like, you're playing men's grown-ass softball. Half the guys can't even make it to first base right. without, like, breaking a hip again because they're 80. Right. <laughs> like, you can't talk trash in that league. Right. you got to just... Yeah, you, you know what? I I lined one off the wall. It's pretty cool, but right. it was actually pretty easy. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, you can't run your mouth after they, that shit. I love that team also. The catcher who was talking shit at one point, he was playing third base. He went up three times in one inning to do a mound visit with the pitcher. And I'm like, guys, it's underhand slow pitch. Like, what are you telling him? Like, hey, throw oh. it more on the plate. Like, that's all. Like, <laughs> How's your arm feeling? They literally had to walk over. They'd have, like, these fucking conversations. I'm at first base. Like, what the hell, guys? Like, throw the oh. damn ball. We play, There's so many people like that in the league that just uh, – granted, I want to win every time I do anything. It doesn't matter. I'm just competitive, right? Right. But, like, there's a point where you, you want to win and, like, you realize also that you're playing Smins slow pitch softball. Right. Like, I can't take it. That it's seriously, literally like the, the, the game one team that's invented for little girls because they cannot compete oh, yeah. in baseball. Like the that's one, what we play. The one team uh, with the with the shortstop that everybody hates. Yeah, a little lispy twinkie. But guy. the other little kid on that team, like every time he gets on base, he puts his head down and like sticks, like gets as far off first as he can without leaving the base. It's his Usain and, Bolt pose, and doesn't yeah. look at the pitch. He's like this <laughs> all the time. Like I'm gonna be ready to go when you hit it, man. I'm gonna be hauling balls and, and like all the you know and just like. I, I don't know. It just fucking annoys me the way that they're like, you know, this is a real game, guys. Like, yeah. come on, you, you fucking pipsqueak. Well, so it's like, come on. It's like, hey, guys, I can see your tits through your jersey. Like, none of us here are great <laughs> athletes. Like, come on. Uh, like, if we were great athletes, we would be playing uh, other sports. But, yeah, I, that fucking fat I guy, don't know, man. Quite infuriating. But at least we won. We got the walk. Yeah, we that did. Was cool. We did get the walk off win. It was good. You know, it felt good. To, to beat some uh, idiots like that. Even if they're dopes and old and have all their tits hanging out, still better to win than to lose. <laughs> Absolutely. 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 What else? What else this week, man? Uh, the news has been a little bit thin. Uh, you got all the NBA free agency. Yeah, the NBA free agency is becoming hard to keep up with. I mean, mostly the ones that I'm paying attention to are just LeBron and Melo. Like, those are the ones everyone wants. Uh Mellow, though, it's getting crazy. Like, people are putting billboards up on their city. Yeah, Houston like, did, right? I just, I've never seen anything like this. The, the I, only thing I can imagine in my mind, right, is like a girl who's in a room, right? Let's say there's 20 guys right. there, butt naked. All their dicks are hanging out. Yeah. She sees the one guy whose dick is a little smaller than everyone else's and covered in genital warts. And she looks right at him and says, yes, put that in me. <laughs> like, that's what I think of it. Like, do they not know Carmelo Anthony's not going to help their team? No. Like, he's a cancer. He's, he's, he's a coach killer. He's a locker room killer. He, he's a fucking – he's one of the worst, like, quote-unquote superstars, in my opinion, ever in the history of the league. Right. They're like, he scores 27 a game. Awesome, dude. He takes fucking 30 <laughs> shots a game. Right. He doesn't facilitate at all. Right. He gets no assists. So, like, yeah, here's your 30. He's just a little bit better version of his teammate J.R. Smith who gets killed. He rebounds a little, like, he, you know, like a little. I think that's more the luck of the it's ball It's more like the long right bounce. Yeah, it's not like he's, he's not boxing there, like, out. You know, getting there, dirty with you know, it. <laughs> he's an average defender, nothing good. Like, he, he's not going to win. He's not going to win unless you just give him everybody. No. I mean, like, uh, with the heat, he could maybe do it. Because yeah, everyone but it else on that team could right. drag him there. But, like, I mean, if you look at it, like, uh, I think LeBron outscored him this year and, and took almost 400 less shots. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, well, that's LeBron not. LeBron also, you can't defend him and he gets fouled right. every but time. Right. But that's the, the lane, difference but, between, yeah. like, like that's, that's a huge amount of shots. Oh, yeah. To still score. To be considered like the best scorer in the like NBA, entire benches in the league that get four hundred shots. Absolutely, a <laughs> absolutely. And he's he's not a really that good of a shooter. He's no. a sub fifty percent shooter. Which if you're going to take more than twenty five shots a game, right. you better be shooting better than fifty percent. Right. Otherwise, you have no fucking business. Well, you need like, to pass the ball. Imagine the destinations though. They've got Houston, right? So it's like that's what we need. Another overpaid, underperforming guy who can score but can't play defense. Right. Like, that's going to push Houston over in the difficult West. Right. Uh, the Bulls. It's like we got a bunch of fucking really good defenders, a good coach, but no scorers. Yeah. 
And well, Melo's going to come in there and, and do then, what? Exactly. And then with Melo. Joakim's like, I'll take both guys. Do you remember this season when Melo, when, like, when the Knicks were just like eating shit halfway through the season and they were right. like, let's shake things up. And Melo came out and he's like, look, I'm going to pass the ball more. And it lasted for like three games. And I think he ended up getting like four assists right. one game. And they were like, oh, my God, Melo changed. I don't he, think he knew what that meant. <laughs> yeah. He's like, wait, if I throw it back, they throw it back to me, right? Like a tough potato. It's like, it's like uh, what's a uh, semi-pro with Will Ferrell where he's like, give me the ball. And he's like, back out. Not feeling it. Back out. Yeah, and they just yeah, keep he feeding moved. him in the post. Just reposting. Not feeling it. Back out. Well, then uh, uh, he, he went and visited. I was reading. He went and visited Chicago. Yeah. And Derek, Derek Rose is like – trying to just jerk him off the whole time. Like Derek Rose did a private workout for him to be like, look, my knee feels so much better. And no, I, like, no, it doesn't. You've played six games in five what years or whatever. What do you think that workout looked like? Like in my head, <laughs> I imagine like the scene from like Rocky four where Drago's training in like, like a gym <laughs> and like there, there's fucking Carmelo with like his clipboard of like scientific metrics. And he's like, mm, yes. <laughs> well, it's like, yes. I imagine it went like, what, I don't even know which knees is bad knee. Like we'll call oh. it his left. <clears throat> but I imagine he was like, he's like, let's do some knee workouts. Watch this. And he did them all with his good knee. And he's like, and now for the bad knee. And that machine and in the gym where you can just do it one-legged. Yeah. And then he starts doing it. He's like, look over there. And then Melo looks back and he's like, I did it. And, you know. He's like, Carmelo, there's three guys trying to guard you. He's like, well, I'll shoot. Oh, sorry, you distracted me. Uh, I mean, that's the thing. Like, no one's ever really, I don't think, questioned Derrick Rose's ability to get healthy again. So even if he's healthy, who cares? The question is how long well, until he, the old legs Here's snap. the thing with 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 – Derrick Rose, though, even if he does get healthy, he doesn't fucking pass the ball either. He's not no. he's not much of a facilitator. I mean, he he's better than Melo. I mean, I think he averaged seven, eight assists that year. He was MVP, so that's not terrible. That's not terrible. That's well above terrible league average. The year that he like shouldn't have got MVP, but right. he did. They well, t- to uh, be honest, no one should have gotten an MVP since LeBron's been in the league. <laughs> kind of. That's horseshit. As like, much as I hate to even say, even Durant that. this year, like it's cool. You're no nah, fun- Durant. Funny I'd say Durant. Like, no way. I'd say so. LeBron pretty much smokes him on every metric. Not really. Except for, like, actual overall points scored. But if you look at efficiencies and everything else, LeBron's right there so with like them. So, like, sabermetrically, which is bullshit. And his defensive metrics and his assist and his, his impact on other players is so dramatically better. I don't know. I'm going to look up the stats better. on that before I argue well, with I you. Because I feel I mean, like Durant, you're wrong. I like Durant. He's a great scorer. But that's still really all he is. He's starting to get a little more rebounds, a little more assists, which kind of help push him over the edge. But... LeBron's actual game impact is so dramatically further ahead than any other player in the league. I don't know. It's just what it is. Like, I get it. Like, Kevin Durant I don't know. was, it was fun. He invited his whole team. He fucking. You want to be in my family? In a giant suit. Yeah. <laughs> like, I get it. You want a fucking fake MVP, cry in front of your mom. That's a cool moment. Nah, like, man. I don't think it's fake. I, I'd give it to Durant this year. He's the only player you could make an argument for, but I mean. It's like when Michael Jordan was in the league and he didn't win MVP every year. Like I think he pretty much did. Like, at least for the six years. Didn't Malone beat him out one nah, year? I don't, not, during that, like, when him and the uh, Jazz were going back and back. I was thinking all the years that they won the finals, he won MVP all six of those years. I'm, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Anyway, but it's, it's anyway. that level. Like, if LeBron is not winning it, you should assume that it's just a, well, it's hey, like, we're, it's we're like trying year, to get a publicity grant. It's like when they gave the MVP to, like, Jeff Kent over Barry Bonds that year. Right. <laughs> it was like... I mean, if you look at the numbers, or or even Terry Pendleton, or like, what an you know, insult! Like, yeah, he wasn't even close to the best guy on his team. Not even, cl- not even close but, when you look at it. Yeah, but I don't uh, know. yeah, fuck it. But free agency, dude. Like, I just I can't get amped about free agency. There's so much talk about like yeah. this guy, this guy. It'll make a difference. Like until you see it on the court, like you never well, know. The only thing I know for sure is that Carmelo Anthony is the tiny, fucking bent. Warts riddled cock that will ruin a team. It's just a question of which team is drunk enough to let him inside. For, for once, like I a hundred percent fully agree with right? you I, on it. Mello I is can't fathom that Mello's war, like you would be better off just getting a run of the mill shooting guard and then going out. I'd rather have Kyle Corver going out and getting yourself a really good point guard yeah. and a really good big man. Yeah, save your money. No, yeah, give me and you, you Patty you'll Mills win more and games. Kyle Corver, you'll win more games that for sure. A hundred percent. Uh I don't know. My Pacers fucking, uh, we lowballed Lance Stevenson, I think, yesterday. I heard he's gone, right? Like, they I don't, he's not gone. Today. I'm pretty sure I he read just, that. He just rejected the initial offer. He hasn't, like, he's not gone anywhere yet. But we lo- it was like five years, $44 million. Like, get right. it, get the fuck out of here. 
That's Do you think a, he's fucking with a uh, bird in them like he did uh, LeBron? Could <laughs> he's be. in negotiations. Like, <laughs> he just fell asleep. <laughs> he's like blowing their papers off the table and shit, sleeping in the conference Sleep. room. Like, I, just hope so. with I hope so. I hope so. Larry Bird. I like, fucking love just that Just give shit. him an offer he'll fucking won't take, so we'll get out of here. Oh, like, man. Whatever. I think Larry Bird hates his guts. Uh, but. You know what's. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to tell because Larry Bird looks like an angry old woman who hates every young he, person's guts. In the Larry, I don't think Larry Bird has <laughs> smiled. Maybe since college, since he was at Indiana State. It's hard I, to tell because his you, cheeks are overtaking his well, mouth. Even when you go back <laughs> and watch the old like films from the 80s of him playing with the Celtics, and they won, I think, what, four titles with him or yeah. something like that? And even like in, in the game sevens or whatever when they beat the Lakers, and he just like walks off the court like, Cool, <laughs> you know, like Jesus, Dad, yeah. fucking be happy for us for oh, once. Hey, man, the greats <laughs> always act like they've done it before. That was Larry to a T. Like, just didn't That's... give. The only clip you could ever find of him being excited is the one when he's not playing and he's whipping that towel around. That's the only clip I've ever <laughs> yeah, seen. Yeah, that's right. Excited. I forgot about that. One. I don't think he was smiling though. Was like, what happened? <laughs> yeah. Like, my theory is that someone like two rows over, like right past camera left, like fucking tripped and they just spilled free hot dogs on the floor, and Larry was like. Woo! <laughs> Yeah. Give me some of those. <laughs> what was it he said? He said uh, a few weeks ago or whatever in his book or something like that, that the one year he got injured for like, and he was out for like a month or something, or 10 days or something like that. But he went and he didn't work out at all. And the cake. time that he was off, he, he ate all, all wedding cake <laughs> every day that he was injured. And he was like, they were like, Larry, why did you, why did you pick wedding cake? And he's like, have you ever had a bad wedding cake? He goes, <laughs> they, he goes, they cost so much cause they fucking put so much effort into those things. <laughs> They're perfect. And I was like, Hey, love or hate him. The man knows logic. You I mean, it, it I makes mean? sense. Yeah. It just perfectly makes sense. Oh, you know who doesn't have logic? Fucking old Warren Sapp. Yeah. That fucking dummy. Did you see that? Uh, I sound like Jay Leno. Did you guys, did you guys see this? You yes, hear about this? See this? See this? this? So, uh, it's, 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 so apparently, <laughs> that's like Jay Leno. It's pretty good, right? It's not bad. <laughs> Back to the it, drive. It's better than Jay Leno's show. <laughs> is it better? <laughs> is it better than my Wahlberg? Uh, uh, Transformers. Not. I think it's a Transformer. I think it'd be a fight to the death between the two of them. Hard to call. Hey, did you guys see this? Did you guys see this? You hear about this? Uh, one sap was at a restaurant. He still never implemented the fucking funny impression counter. Oh, we should. We should. We All right. Special effects. Too. So, so Warren Sapp's at a restaurant. Racked up almost what a seven hundred dollar bill, right? It was enormous. It was him and, and what, four friends, something think? like that. On on the receipt at the end, leaves zero tip, and he right. and he writes, "Boys don't leave tips." Right. And cuz he was upset because the waitress <laughs> called them boys <clears throat> right. during their during their visit. <clears throat> I'm I'm going to branch out here. Okay? The word boys has some racial racial connotation dating back right. to like the slave <clears throat> era. Mm -hmm. I get that. It, it it's in there, right? How many times have you been into like any restaurant, especially like a restaurant where it's primarily women that are your servers, right? Right. And they come up to the table and like, hey, boys. Right. What do you guys want to drink? Like, just trying to flirt with you so you'll tip them more or whatever. Right. I, I, I'd almost. We were just at a bar Tuesday with our softball team, and she kept right. saying, here's your beers, boys. Here's your beers, boys. Here's, here's your water. The thing. Do you think she moseyed up like Boss Hogg is like, what you want to eat, boy? <laughs> like, I doubt it was like that. Right. And now right. he's explaining himself on Twitter that she, like, his final thing was like, Oh, and she had bad service. I was like, get the fuck get out, out of here. here, dude. If you're get out of here, I, I've look, look, I've had bad service. If I run up a bill like that, even if I have bad service, I'm giving them something because I still have taken their now, this time. Is confusing. Like most restaurants, isn't it? If it's a big enough party or high enough. Yeah, bill, they, they usually put an automatic like 18 percent gratuity. gratuity on yeah. that. But I, I, I would almost I would almost bet everything I fucking own and my life that that's the case, that the waitress was like. Hey boys, like just being lighthearted, trying to flirt with him, and he went out of his way to try to get offended by it, and to fucking try to make a statement and pull something out of thin air. Because to be quite honest with you, I've I've never right. liked Warren Sapp. He's always seemed like a fucking dickhead in all interviews I've ever seen him. Right. And like when he played, he was a fucking dickhead. And he and he's just trying to make news, man. And I'm fucking tired I, of that kind of stuff. Uh, <clears throat> in my opinion, I could be wrong. Part of me, if it, she was, if she walked up and was racist, then I'll have his back. She, but I'd almost bet it wasn't. If she'd walked up and been like, hey, you N-words, like, I'd buy it. Right. Like, I don't right. think she was being racist. Like, I think 
I call. And it's easy to say. Friend, like, I don't know. Like I said, I wasn't there. It right. Because kind of, here's my thing. If you're really that offended and she called you boys multiple times. Right. Why didn't you bring it up to her? Exactly. Why didn't you get up and walk the? Fu- I walked out of restaurants for way. Absolutely, less than that. absolutely. I walk up if I don't get my. I, you actually know I have like the most stringent like expectations of restaurants yeah. of anyone. Right. Like if you don't fill my diet coke, like if it's there for more than like thirty <laughs> seconds, oh, man. And I'm watching the clock. I get pissed. Like uh, if my chips aren't refilled. Well, we were at uh, problem. <laughs> we went out. We went out for Josh's uh, birth thirtieth birthday. Uh, well, a few weeks, a couple weeks ago. Right. <laughs> and we had this huge party. We had this huge party at this Mexican restaurant. <clears throat> And fu- like it was literally the worst service I've ever had in my life. Right, which is we, restaurants known for their great service. We had a we had a reservation at eight p.m. We didn't mm. get sat until almost eight twenty. Not a big deal. I was like, whatever, you know, it's busy Friday night. No big deal. Right. We sit at eight twenty. The dude doesn't take our order until almost nine fifteen. Right. Like we sat there for almost a full <clears throat> solid hour before we even took our food away. Right. Right. And so <clears throat> it's a Mexican restaurant, so they just keep bringing us out <clears throat> chips and salsa. And yeah. we all, and we're all drinking water, like the whole table's got water, and and they like <laughs> all we asked for was like, can you just set a couple of pitchers down, and then you don't have to run back here every five seconds. We're all drinking a lot of water because nobody's fucking helping us, right? Mm-hmm. Well, they can't even do that. And like Josh is just getting fucking more furious. Yeah, and I'm getting pretty fur- furious too. But it's I'm I'm like the guy. I'm like. I'm like, it's his birthday, so like, I'll try to keep the calm head and fucking like deal with it, right? Or at least like try to help out because like, you know, it's his birthday. Fuck it. I, I like I don't like to be bothered on my birthday. Right. So finally, the dude comes over and and Josh is like, can I get some more water? I don't know. I can't eat any more chips because my mouth is so dry. I'll probably choke, you know, and, and the waiter's just like he's like, oh, yes, you know, runs back. Well, then the waiter comes back around my side of the table and uh, Connor was with us. And the waiter leans over, Connor and I, with, with your water and starts pouring it. And as he does, he just fucking mumbles under his breath. He goes, wouldn't want him to choke. Yeah. <laughs> like he was pretty pissed. I actually think he did 100% want me to choke because I also fucking reamed out his bus. And I fucking debated it in my head. I was like, do I tell Josh at this point or do I just keep that in my fucking back pocket? Because if I tell him, like, we're, it's probably going to be a fist fight with the waiter. Oh, yeah. No, I get fucking furious. Like, it's so, my wife gets so mad. Like, last night we went to the Sundance Cinema to see Snowpiercer, one of the best films I've right. seen in years. I can't even remember the last time I liked a movie that much. We're at the movie theater, and I'm hungry, and it's like one of those come have dinner beers in a movie. Right? right. So we walk in, walk right up to the counter. We're in line. We're looking at what we want. So I walk up, and I'm like, yeah, you know, my wife wants this. I'll have the uh, tater tots and the uh, the mini corn dogs. Lady's like, oh, we're out of those. And I was like, really? <laughs> She's like, yeah, they're really popular. I'm like, hmm, that's funny. I'm like, if I had a menu with something really popular, I'd probably keep some stock in it. Is <laughs> that weird? Stock. Yeah, I was like, why is it on your menu? You don't have it. Like, no one put a sign up. And it was just one of those things, like, for no reason. Because, like, everyone who knows me, there's nothing I love more than going to a movie and just getting a big soda and popcorn. Yeah. So I could have easily just, and I wasn't even that hungry. I could have easily downshifted to popcorn. But something about this just inspired a righteous rage. So then there's me holding up the entire line for like three to five minutes. You're it a felt dick. like an eternity. Fucking dick. Just fucking reaming this lady out on the policies. I'm like, I used to fucking work in a movie theater. I'm like, <laughs> if you have something that's popular, I'm like, let me guess. You carry one bag of popcorn for a week? Is that how you do it? Yeah. Is that how you do it? And I'm just fucking getting living. And they're bringing people over. <laughs> At one point, I like threatened to like walk out and get my ticket refund. And my <laughs> wife's just like shaking her head. I'm but it is just like I'm like one of the biggest assholes about like service industry and whatever. But yeah. even that that guy at the fucking Mexican restaurant got his tip. Yeah. I've never not put a tip. Even yeah. if I like give him the reaming, I still tip. Yeah. So to me, it's shocking. But it's also the funny thing is it's the second bad uh, decision Warren Sapp makes. He was actually there to watch the U.S. soccer game. Ah, uh, well. So maybe that's I, why. I watched Maybe that's why. Look, here's the thing. If I'm wrong, like if the, if the, if the waitress came up and was like, hey, boys. What do you boys want? Chicken? You know, like, and she's just like blatantly racist. I'll apologize, but I, I'm almost, a, I'm almost a thousand percent. Uh, I mean, it was certain. Only, it was actually only a seventy dollar tip. Seven, or seventy dollars. Seventy dollar tab. tab. So I'm almost. So you're talking fourteen. Bucks. But either way, I'm like, I'm almost certain. Like, he just took it out of context to try to get upset. Right. And I'm fu- like, mm-hmm. uh, that shit is. It's that's what devalues like these movements. To end racism or like end sexism or end is when people are, like they just cry wolf. All the time on shit like that. You know wolf, what I dude. mean? They cry woof. So I like, could be wrong. I wasn't there. I'm not I'm not like 
speculating, but I, I, I'm right. guessing. I'm guessing. Well, take it from me. I'm the master of being able to find things to get offended and fight people about. Right. No problem. That's actually well, my that's specialty. Well, that's the thing. This, to me, and also you're like, worst case scenario, like all the negative publicity you're going to get, you're a huge dick. Does Warren Sapp need to fucking say it? Like I said, a 20% tip on that is like 14 bucks right. around. Right. So you're like, fuck, dude, give her $8 and yeah. say, give her 10% and be like, here's fucking seven bucks or give yeah. her five bucks. And be like, here's $75. You fucking blew it. Right. I'm offended. Like, right. It's just such an asinine. I would expect nothing less. Well, than that's what I was saying. Like even soccer. like with as as bad a service as I as we had right. at at the at the Mexican, I still left a tip. It wasn't right. I didn't leave him a huge tip, but it's still like the guy was with us for two hours. Like I'm at least giving him a little something for his time. You know what's funny like, about that movie theater story? I did fucking throw righteous rage down, and I didn't fucking <laughs> get anything. And I stood there and I made sure everyone knew I didn't get anything. <laughs> I went into the theater fucking furious. <clears throat> Guy cuts me off, and I'm just like, I fucking crack his head open. Fucking my wife's like, you're going to have a stroke. Stop. <laughs> Literally, because I threw a childish fit and refused to eat, with 30 minutes left, I started to get the handshakes. And I'm like, oh, God, I got the diabetic <laughs> sweats. My blood sugar just fell off a cliff. So I just fucking almost put myself in a diabetic coma to prove this fucking righteous fury. <laughs> you fucking dick. All right, let's move what? on to the final to the final countdown, I guess we can call it the final countdown. Yeah, yeah. That'd be pretty cool, though. You think they'd care if we just stole probably. that? Probably. Europe would probably be upset Are if we took that. Those guys even alive? Uh, yeah. I don't know. There's Spec no way. I'm guessing. How All much? Right. How much drugs can one song buy you? They had another song. Enough to kill you, right? They had another song. Did they? So uh, they had like twelve other songs. I'm sure it nobody, came, I'm sure nobody it came heard on an album with other songs <laughs> yeah. on it. Yeah, but nobody heard them. Anyone ever heard? <laughs> All right, we're gonna do uh, a little list today, okay. and uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a callback okay. to the last podcast when we did the segment of "Are You Impressed?" when we were talking about the no hitter. So I came up with this. I gotta say though, this is the first time on the pod that like universally no one had my back nobody i got so much shit for yeah. not and you should have and you should have you deserved it i got so much shit for thinking no hitters are not cool it's a terrible opinion i would almost fucking <laughs> buy a baseball ticket for anyone who just fucking was on my side like i'd be like i'll go watch a game with you this fucking non-moron <laughs> this non like, you know who watches no hitters and thinks awesome guys who watch soccer games and you know ties, you know who zero, zero you know, who, you know what gross, like the man. definition of like a moron is it's the guy that says something that literally no one agrees with <laughs> and then still <laughs> thinks that everybody else is a moron so, oh, there goes my pen. Remember when Blew Isaac it. Newton fucking came up with gravity? People said that shit about him, too. <laughs> yeah. Like, dummy. Remember when people said the earth was round? Those guys got fucking laughed at for a while. Yeah. 50 years from now when no hitters are outlawed in baseball. And then David Koresh said right. he was Jesus, and, and nobody ever was like, people's, every, eventually people was like, you're crazy. Him. And then there was like, oh, you're right, because he's hey, not Jesus. 50, 60 people really loved him and treated him like a messiah. So did he uh, win? No. That's like such a small how many sample. People, how many people in life do you have that you would really like? You did get a bang like, a lot of chicks How many people from would go all the way with you? Like, yeah, we'll fight the government in tanks and incendiary rounds. It's true. In my life, I got maybe three. Yeah. Maybe three. Let's not support him. That's it. Let's not, let's not rally around I'm not that. saying he was right. I'm saying he <laughs> did know how to inspire people. All right, That's let's awesome. do the list. All right. Okay. So what I did was I took, I, I stuck to baseball specifically, and I picked out five of what I consider some of the most impressive, like, single-person feats in baseball. Something okay. that you can – it's not a team accomplishment. just something a single person can accomplish. Right. And we're going to rank them okay. from least impressive to most impressive. All right, give me the list so I can <clears throat> so jot these down. here's the five. In no particular order yet. Okay. Perfect game. <laughs> a no-hitter. <laughs> a four-home run game. A 20-strikeout game. Or a 56-game hitting streak? 56-game hitting streak? Which is the record. Uh, the okay. the uh, Yeah, that's the record. How Joe. many people do you think have ever gotten there? Probably only one. That's the record. I mean, like, how many people have even been at, like, 50? Uh, Pete Rose got to 54, I believe. Jimmy Rollins got, like, 33, 34, something like that. Okay. What's his name? Was that uh, was it Aaron Otto that got to like twenty eight this year? Wasn't it? Right. A Before lot of people get it. to that. Like so people get about something. halfway. So it's a pretty halfway. it's a pretty impressive streak. At least in my opinion, you might not be impressed by it, but it's an individual accomplishment. Okay. So 
Depends on who you're facing. Let's start at number five. Least impressive uh, of of that group. Uh, least impressive? Uh, no hitter. Easy. Not <laughs> even close. I knew you were going to say it's, that. I mean, it's fucking like, compared to this list of actual great achievements, like, pathetic. <laughs> How many four home run games do you see a year? Most of the times, none. Maybe Most one. Most of the time, none. There's, there's only been Maybe one. How so many, many 20K games? Probably none. None. There's only been a handful. How many people get 56-game hit streak a season? None. Perfect games? Usually none. Yeah. So to me, the no hitter is the thing you see the most. It's the most unimpressive because a guy could fucking, I mean, you could literally have 27 robbed home runs. Yeah. Or not even that. You could have, yeah, I mean, you could still do that. That'd be a perfect game though. But keep if you just, did that in like six walks. Keep justifying. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to go. Not that impressive. I'm going to go four home run game. Least impressive of that list. Really? Yeah, because. You see not, at least three no hitters a year almost. Not, every year. Not that a four home run game is not impressive because it is. I'm not saying that it's not. Right. Of this list, I think it's the least impressive because, you know, when you're a major league hitter, especially like a Josh Hamilton, right? a pitcher can have a bad day and leave four pitches up to you, and it's not that hard. Josh Hamilton's, it was mostly the drugs doing the work, so I buy that I'm one. saying it's not that hard for him to hit a home run on a good pitch. So if he's... If I think he's you're see- drastically, because here's the thing. Like, assuming that was probably off of two to three different pitchers, right? Probably. So what you're maybe even four. That last guy comes up and says, oh, shit, this guy's hit three dingers. Like, He's more likely. All I have to do is just pitch around him. Not right. give him shit to hit. And he and the probably guy left one up. Does. Probably left well, one up. Of course, up. he still left one there. But I'm saying, after the second home run, the third and fourth at bat, those guys are doing everything they can to not let him get a hit, most likely. And he's still getting a hit. Maybe. Like, whereas... I mean, it's just, yeah. You no know what hitter, I almost put in place of that? no hitter. In place of the four homer game, I left it off was a six for six game. Let's just. Talk. Six for six is really. Do you think six for six is more impressive than a four home run game? That's a really tough one. That's a tough one. I, I left one. it off because I was like, eh, I don't know. You know what it's more impressive than? A no hitter. Anyway. Okay. So you got no <laughs> hitter. I got four home run game in the no five hitters. slot. So the number four Not slot. Close. What do you got? Uh, Probably four home run game. Right four home there. run game. Yeah. It's really impressive, but, like, you know, I mean, if you're talking steroid era, I feel like that was a lot more common back then. Um, I mean, it's super impressive to me. Yeah. Super, super impressive uh, getting four home runs. It doesn't happen that often, but, yeah. I mean, it can be a fluky yeah. day. You never know. I'm going right there. I'm going 20 Ks <laughs> in a game. Idiot. It's impressive. You know, I'm not I'm not downgrading it or uh, – uh, no, but I know it hasn't happened very often. Like, not I mean, not very much. Like, I don't know, maybe a handful of times ever. Maybe not even that many. I can't remember I'm specifically. Look it up. I would bet you that maybe it's, three. Like, I after, know Kerry like, Wood, the old black and white where they could scuff up the balls and. Kerry fuck it Wood up. did like, it. I believe Randy Johnson did it, uh, and I don't know who else. I think somebody else did it before them. Maybe a couple people. Anyway, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, but you, you know you can catch a lineup off guard. One day where they're fucking swinging and missing. In 27 at-bats, you can catch fucking well, nine professional batters But there was more guard. than 27 at-bats in those games because they didn't throw perfect games. Okay, so that, that even helps make my point. So you're saying these fucking professional hitters are getting anywhere from 27 to probably 40 at-bats. Because if you're striking out 20, there's probably not like a ton of other hits going on. Right, but still, there's but more. it's like, I mean, are you fucking kidding? Right here, I've got Roger Clemens did it twice. Clemens apparently. did it twice. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That... Might be the most impressive pitching staff. That's I've pretty ever outstanding. Heard in my life. Kerry so, Woods did it once. Kerry Wood or Kerry Wood, yes. Not Tiger Woods. I Tiger think, Woods. I think that's it. Apparently, I was thinking Randy Johnson did it, but maybe not. Okay. So I don't know. That that's not a hundred percent. This maybe, website doesn't look very official, but well, either way, it's not. Still, it's I mean, rare. It's rare. Twenty fucking strikeouts. Okay. What's your number three? That's three swing and misses. That's hey. Twenty times. That's that's not necessarily three swing and misses. You threw that, that also either means were swing and misses or foul balls. The, the ump was probably chiseling the fucking corners oh, too fuck during that game. That, that's not all <laughs> swing and misses. That's a lot of fucking four inches off the plate. I'll give you the strike because you're pitching well today. You're Guarantee it. Crazy. Go back and watch the game tape. Um, ump's chi- ump's chisel. Crazy. After about five innings of really good pitching, the umps start to chisel the batters. Yeah, a I'm sure bit. they don't do that during no hitters and perfect games. Yeah, right, so. I'm not saying they don't. I'm just saying. 20 Ks is more impressive than all of the fucking other nonsense stats that you're talking about. Whatever. Right now. Whatever. All right. 
All right, so I've got four home runs, number five, 20 Ks, number four. What's yours so far? You got no hitter, number five, uh, four, four home, home runs, run, number yeah. two. What's your number three? Perfect game. Perfect. <laughs> because it's not actually perfect. <coughs> Semantically, it's a fucking straw dog already. Not a fan of it because uh, it's not actually a perfect game. Yeah. It's a really good game. I've already explained this. A perfect game as we've seen it. A real perfect game is no one fucking touches the ball at all. That doesn't make any sense. That, all fucking that makes case. no sense. 27 strikeouts. That's as no. good as a pitcher can do in the game of baseball. That's literally the best he can do. It's so ass. Anytime a guy hits it into the field of play, you are relying on your teammates to fucking help you out. So that's why. That's the point of baseball. It's, it's a pretty good game. That's the point it's of baseball. It's a really an individual a, achievement, though. Get when the they, fuck out of here. When they list in Cooperstown plaques, perfect games, <laughs> do they put all fucking nine guys on the plaque? No. They should. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. The actual. I'm not saying they should. Twenty seven strikeouts. That's the as right. good a pitcher can do. All right. Then it's an it's a pretty good game. Is a no hitter, <laughs> and a nice job, kid. That's like a perfect <laughs> game to me. <laughs> yeah, perfect game. I mean, all right, perfect game right. number three. That's it's all right. It's infinitely more impressive than <laughs> I'm a no taking, hitter because you're taking, not throwing the walks. I'm in. taking no hitter at number three. Yeah, I think great. that's the third most most impressive. It's it's uh. You know, because you can walk some guys in it, you can, you can have some errors. So it's a pretty good. But game. to me, like if you throw nine innings against major league hitters mm -hmm. and none of them even bloop a single on you, like that's impressive to me. That's, but if you face major league hitters and strike if it out were, twenty of them, that's not impressive to you. I still, I said, I think that's impressive. That's I just infinitely more impressive. I, than I a don't think game. that's more impressive than not letting anyone get a hit off of you. If you. Throw a perfect game. Like I said before, that could be fucking 27 rockets to the outfield where all those guys are making impressive, crazy, insane catches. None of them got on base. And that's less Or none of them got hits. That's more say. impressive to you than a guy fucking mowing down 20 batters. Right. Doing it himself, 20 fucking batters. Yeah. Professional hitters, as you fucking said. <laughs> yeah. You're fucking I do. Here, I really do. I think Not it's more impressive. Close. I think it's more impressive. I think many, they're very close. So if this site's to be believed, there have been three guys, three, two 20, guys who have done 20 Two guys, days, three, three instances, times. yeah. That's way less. Way less. Than fucking perfect games. Right. It's a harder to achieve milestone than perfect well, games. Well, yeah. Which in and of itself tells you a little bit about the impressiveness of the achievement. I don't know. I guess it's just how you look at it. I look at it from yeah. like a good point of view. You look at it from <laughs> a dummy point of view. You're the Warren Sapp of this list. What's I your think. number two? Uh, number two, this is tough. I would probably say number two, I'd go 20 K's 20 K's. Yeah. I mean, it's to me, it's as impressive as you can be as a pitcher. There's okay. nothing more impressive. I'm not going to fight you too me, hard. The on that ultimate, one. the ultimate job of the pitcher is to not let the batter put the ball in play. The late, the least amount of times that a batter can put a ball in play, the more you're giving your team and your defense a chance to win. Right. So to me, just mowing down 20 guys, like you said, professional batters, they're not blooping them in. I mean, that's not a bunt. That's nothing. That's you come up to the plate and you sit your ass right back down. Yeah. You have literally no impact I, on the game. I think you overvalue 20, strikeouts too much. No way. Yeah. A lot of pitchers, no a lot of pitchers don't go for strikeouts. Mm -hmm. Because it, it'll keep their this it keeps their pitch count down. They learn right. how to pitch to spots and get right. and get the hitters to hit it to where. That's why they right. put shifts on. Yeah, sure. So because they know they he'll pitch the guy inside, cool, bro. get him to pull it. It's it's just cool. do the Dodgers you under, shift that much? You think when Clayton Kershaw's pitching? Uh, probably not. Is it probably more for their shittier pitchers? No, not it's necessarily. It's kind of like when people tell you like. Hey, go see that new French cinema movie. It it's a character study. Every every pitcher in the league shifts poppy. It doesn't matter who's There's pitching no against There's no fucking him. really great pitchers that have ever been like, oh, he's a pitch-to-contact guy. Like, it's impossible. Like, what Greg, did you say the other day? Greg, Greg Maddox, Maddox. He's top five pitcher of all time. Is he? Yeah, absolutely. Is he? Look at his stats. No way he's top five Look at his time. stats, man. I'm going to look that up. I'm not going to argue. I don't have his stats in he, my memory bank. He is unbelievable. He pitched a complete he game one time. In less than 80 pitches. Oh, a complete game. He wow. walked like 20 people in a whole season. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I mean, come on. Get real. He's a good pitcher. I wouldn't say he was a pitch to let the defense do all the work pitcher like you do, but that's fine. He was, he was, he found, he knew how to hit spots. Mm -hmm. The dude never missed a spot. Go back and watch mm -hmm. a game tape. Go back yeah, and watch. I believe that. And Shane Batty, I never made a game plan mistake. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> I'm not saying Greg Maddox never made a mistake. I think you, but he wasn't I a strikeout pitcher. I think you dramatically pitcher. undervalue the strikeout. I think you dramatically overvalue no, the strikeout. No, 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 no. It's it takes at least three <laughs> pitches to do it. Not to mention the balls you throw in there, foul balls. So I mean, all you're doing is running your pitch count up if you're a strikeout pitcher. Look it pitcher. up though. It's the absolute best outcome for a defense. Metrics wise, because any other That's time a player true, is though. allowed to put the ball in play, anything can happen. Okay, so it's absolutely it's 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 not the best outcome though. The best outcome for, for the defense for any That's batter, the absolute best outcome. No, the best outcome. No, there's no outcome. No negative impact, and you get the out. Outcome That's as good as it is. Outcome means like the final result, correct? Right. Am I right on that? Right. So, the best final result you can get out of any batter is just an out. That's not true. It is true. Outs are different. It's, they're all the same. A bunt out that moves the runners is not as good as a strikeout. Well, I'm talking about, I'm talking about just the batter. I'm not talking score, semantics. That's not the same. I'm saying there are metrics a, a runner can advance of fucking at-bats in the league. A runner, strikeout is as good a as a runner can, can advance on a bunt. A runner can actually get safe at first on a strikeout. You can't, you can't get out. You can't be safe at first. It's a long if the guy, shot, you almost if the guy catches a fly that. ball, you I'd can't be out at first. I'd, how many of those do you think happen a year? Drop third strike. <laughs> just shooting holes all over your shit. Strike. You're not. <laughs> this is your argument. You're like, I'm just going to say as much stupid shit as I can and see no. if you can't deflect it all. Anyway, number I, two. This is the thing. I'm Howard, and you're throwing all the bullshit you can at me, and I blocked almost all of it, and uh, the one thing I didn't even acknowledge, you're like, got it. You're Howard? Belgium. Well, yeah. I'm the guys that just scored the two goals at the end of the game. Finally got the breakthrough. You know what I mean? see what you're saying. Man. <laughs> Nailed it. Anyway, num- my wrong. number two. Except for that you're wrong. My number two is going to be the 56-game hit streak. Number two. Uh, it's, hard, it's hard for me because that's, I don't think anybody's ever going to break that record. It's pretty, it's pretty incredible No, when you think about it. In so today's just, game, not a chance. Yeah, and the pitchers are so much better now than they pitchers were. Pitchers are overpowering. Right. Uh, no one values average. Like, to me, like. Junior- now it's a sabermetric world where it's all about. Extra bases, power. Right. I mean, we're out of that. But There's like Jim, Jimmy Rollins goal. getting, I think, at 33. Like to me, that's that's phenomenal in mm-hmm. today's pitching. And even even the 28 Arenado had. Like that's that's amazing. I think that's like a third of a uh, season. You so get a I'm not devaluing that. And crazy. it's hard for me to not put it in the one spot, but I got to put it at number two. What was your number one now? 56. Your 56 game. game. Not even close. And I'm perfect game. That's to <laughs> that's me. Just listen. Stupid. No, it's not. Listen. <laughs> you get. One guy's ever the, done 56. <clears throat> Almost 20 guys have thrown perfect games. Right. It's not even close. But to be the pitcher and to get all 27 batters out, not one mm-hmm. person got on base. Well, he's on not him. getting them out, but and that's it, fine. Well, you, you're you still, like, leading the charge to get these dudes out. Sure. You're making good pitches the entire game. You didn't walk anybody. You didn't even, like, try to pitch around anybody. And no walks is impressive. You know, sure. like, you, you, you challenged every hitter, and you got every single one of them out. In a, in a game, you did it, but that's fine. You did well. Your team, like your team, obviously made some plays behind and you. Your teammates are getting but most they're, the outs. Typically, they're you know you're throwing pitches, you're keeping it down in the zone, so they're hitting ground balls to your second baseman. You you know the fly balls are not so second baseman rockets in the game. gap. You're hit, you're getting them to pop the ball up right. instead of. So to me, I think that's the most impressive thing that you can do on a baseball field, in my opinion. That's in my not opinion. A good opinion, but, but I'm not going to argue with you about the 56 game because it could easily be the 56. It could easily be like the most impressive this feat. List, like, are there other things in baseball that perhaps could be done that are more impressive? Probably, sure. sure, sure. I mean, if we really sat down and like spent forever, there are probably things you could find that are more impressive than that. I think it'd be really hard. Yeah. Like to me, the 400 season now is going to become one of those things. Like a back to back perfect game like if you threw two starts in a row well perfect fake perfect. <laughs> shut up the hell of a game kid game <laughs> you know what i mean like that's what it is I we've think, never uh, seen an actual I, I think the most impressive thing ever would be 27 strikeout tom game. i think that's tom as browning as i'd ever be i think tom browning threw no hitters and back-to-back starts back in the day it's not impressive at all that's pretty impressive nah. Oh, man, you're an asshole. What if he was playing, like, the fucking Phillies now twice? Like, <laughs> if you're giving up a hit against them, you should fucking feel ashamed Whatever. of Whatever. Hey, we got to get out of here. We're running short on time. Uh, hey, did you guys, you guys see this? You hear about this? Hey, did you guys see this? Uh, thanks, for turn, this? thanks for tuning in to the Jay Leno show today. <laughs> no, no, no. Obviously, my list was better. Hit us up on Twitter. Leave us some comments down there. Let us know if you think he's better, whatever. I think you're wrong. Uh, he probably I think feels. We proved last week that our fucking audience knows little to nothing about. I baseball. think we proved last week that Considering I'm mostly our, one of our right. number one commenters is a Cardinal fan, and everyone disagreed with me on no hitters. I think it's safe to assume uh, they know little to nothing about baseball. Whatever. Hey guys, thanks for watching the Nick Hall <laughs> Comedy Podcast. We'll see you next week. Hopefully, as long as you know, like an earthquake doesn't take us out. 
Always tip your waitresses, even the shitty ones. Yeah. They've still got boobs. <laughs>